Welcome back, everyone. It's June 15 of 2015. We're going to take a look at uh, Franz Brentano, the father of phenomenology. Uh, pre hustrel he actually uh, offered a great deal of instruction for Hustrel. So he's pre hustrel He's the true father of phenomenology. He takes the approach of descriptive psychology, but Brentano wants to remind us that uh, it's not going to be a reductionism to genetic psychology. That's... Uh, all he really wants to say in this very brief few introductory pages, he just simply wants to say that he's not going to be proposing a reductionism. He's going to write a phenomenology for us, but it's not going to be a reductionism to genetic psychology. Uh, basically, his descriptive psychology appeared roughly uh, around 1874 in Volume 1, 1911 in Volume 2, in 1928 for volume 3. This consolidated volume appeared in Germany in 1982 and then it reached uh, America in 1995. So uh, a lot of work from uh, the late 1800s to the early 1900s that got finally into the hands of the German people around 1982 and it got into America in 1995 but an extremely influential thinker who really uh, informed uh, the entire school of psychology and the formal school of phenomenology. All he wants to say before he jumps into the meat of his argument, he wants to point out that he's not going to be doing a reductionism to genetic psychology, which is physiological psychology, which is simply relates to physical chemical events and describes conditions of occurrence, uh, never really working on a true doctrine, but instead laws of becoming which uh, are subject to exceptions, a very imprecise science. And even the laws of association are imprecise. The law of similarity, the law of continuity, both address uh, one thought referring to another. But Brentano says preconditions for recall have never been exhaustively identified so this uh, genetic psychology is very imprecise if it tried to become a, a true um, inclusive school of thought. He said that Descartes said that the, the divisions of individual difficulties are to be dealt with as ordered by nature. For Brentano, that means genetic psychology is a tool only. It is to serve pure psychology of psychognosy. So it is a tool to service and to serve the work the formal work of pure psychology, which is psychognosy for Brentano. He says, in a, if you look at the field of the sensory, the arousal of sense phenomena does happen according to the laws of genetic psychology. This calls up the sensation to be analyzed, and the calling up and the retention are both addressed by genetic psychology. But then you got to stop, because to reach certainty, psychognosy must take over and experimentally compare the called up sensations. So all of the analytical work is done by psychognosy and genetic psychology serves as a tool to support the formal pure work of, psych of psychology as psychognosy. So Brentano proposes to follow a three step method, the pure method of pure psychology, which will be to identify the components of the uh, internal perception and then to enumerate the structural connections between perception components and then to f form a doctrine that will be sharply defined and precisely defined while still allowing for gaps here and there as long as we first lay down the fundamental rule that this uh, system, this uh, phenomenology as a system is open to revision that it can have gaps that appear in it, it, but that's okay as long as we allow for revision. So he will take the method of first identifying the content of the components of internal perception and then take that content and then chain it together in a structure. So we have a structured perception components as a whole and that will formulate the foundation of his doctrine of a phenomenology. So he just really is, he opens 
the book opens really with an apologetic that he is not proposing a reductionism. He will not fall back into genetic psychology. He still proposes a pure science. And he uh, proposes a pure science of phenomenology. And that his apologetic statement is that phenomenology can be a pure science. It is not genetic psychology. So he will follow a three-step method. He will not uh, fall into the uh, threat of reductionism. He will not practice reductionism. And all of this uh, spilled out over a number of years. Like I said, it spilled out into a three-volume work. And only later got uh, edited and consolidated to this German um, volume. So we're getting a very uh, compressed three-volume research project, but uh, of a very influential individual who is the father of the school of phenomenology. So we'll take a look at the meat of his argument in the very next lesson. He just gave a very brief apologetic to say that he was not going to practice reductionism, that he would propose a true psychognosy, a true pure formal psychology that will follow the three rules of developing and formulating a precise doctrine. So the very next lesson, we're going to jump into the meat of his work that all took place in the late 1800s and early 1900s.